So as you can see, I'm doing a Subaru today. Uh, this one's a 2005 with a 2.5 single overhead cam. You can see the single cams on each side. And you can see I've got a mark here where uh, the base plate and the cylinder head meet. And then uh, I've got a line on the timing belt. And then I've also got a mark on the cam wheel. You'll see corresponding marks here and here, but this one it's just got a notch in that inside timing cover. On the crank side of it, you've got the mark here that corresponds with the gear. And then also there's a mark where your crankshaft position sensor is, just underneath it there. I'll go ahead and free you from the tripod, be prepared to puke. So as I come down, you can see the marks that are there. So those need to line up. Now the interesting thing and the question that I get a lot on these is if I'm at top dead center like the marks are here, by the way they're not in parentheses, um, well am I going to have a problem if these, wheel, if these uh, cam wheels turn and the answer is no and this is not top dead center, this is mid stroke, this is a boxer engine and the pistons go this way on each side and so the way that it works is when you're in this position that you see there um, let's go back in the tripod for just a second when you see it at that marking or that position they're in the middle so they're not all the way out and they're not all the way in and so where they are is right in the middle so if they're right in the middle um, all of them are even because you know on this side when this one goes out this one's in and they go like this you know like the pistons uh, exchange this way and same on this side so if you have it in the middle, then they're both uh, recessed from the top of the piston. You know, like where you would have to put the piston rings in to get it to go in. They're both uh, as far away at the same time as they can be together, you know, mid-stroke. So if the valves were open or closed, for example, if you were to turn that cam wheel and the valves were to open and close, you've got plenty of gap, plenty of room. So don't worry about it. So as you go to put the timing belt on, you can see I've got the tensioner on and I've got the pin in it, and it's just loose. Um, it's tight because the marks are all lined up. But what you do the next thing, and I've got another video on this that's more clear out of the engine, but I just figured I'd do another video just to show that you can do it um, with the radiator and everything. And you can see I've pulled the fans out. I just uh, undo the bolts at the top, undo the plug that's on the back side, and then it's just got little studs at the bottom. You just pull them straight up and out. The one that's on the passenger side, this left side, I go through the bottom because it's easier. This gets in the way, this gets in the way. So I just drop it out through the bottom. Plus you have to pull the skirt on this side to be able to drain the radiator because that's at the bottom tank all the way far to the passenger side to get to that. So with these in place, uh, you want to put in your uh, toothed idler gear or teethed up idler gear first. And what I do is I lead with the bolt until I get it in the hole, line it up, and then thread it in like this. It's a 14 millimeter, just so you know, the bolt for it. I go in there, I feel with my finger where the hole is, and it's going to be right up close to the water pump. So I get them in there together. Boy, it's hard with the tripod in the way. Bear with me. Trust me, when you go to do it, it's going to be a lot easier than what I'm dealing with right now. And it should be a little bit hard to get it in there. You don't want to put any spray silicone or anything against that belt. Just leave it that way. Deal with it being hard. Anybody else just hear a submarine? I swear I just heard a submarine. Phone's been blowing up today. That just means I got a text message. So you just do that, snug it up. This is aluminum. Don't strip it out. When it stops and it says I've had enough, trust it. So I'll slide the belt on like that. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll take the smooth idler with the lip on the inside and we'll pull this up. And what you want to do is don't let the belt be sitting on that lip right there. Make sure that the belt is. Uh, that lips behind the belt. That's what I mean to say.
this Subaru is kind of a special one. It belongs to my aunt and uncle who taught me how to, or got my parents out skiing and uh, were there and present. At least my aunt was the first day I went skiing. If you know my other video channel is uh, the Ski Viking. I'm pretty passionate about skiing, so I'm pretty passionate about my aunt and uncle too for bringing that into my life. They're also the reason why I live in the state that I live, because my aunt came out and then brought my mom out where she met my dad. It's kind of interesting. So there you have it. That's how you put the timing belt in. And the only remaining thing to do is, uh, you can see I've got these clips, these paper clips that we're clipping the belt onto the cams. Got to have those. Go to your local office supply store. They just sit in the toolbox like that. And then the next thing you do is pull the pin. Clear! the pin that sets the tensioner and you're in great shape now this is the first one that I've ever had to do where I had to replace the tensioner um, the other tensioner as you look at the top of it where the seal is was leaking oil I'll go ahead and uh, go grab that so I can show it to you so here's what it looks like I often use a drill bit to pin these because they're just so stiff you know they're gonna snap before they bend so it makes a good tensioner and you can see that there's a lot of chew mark on the top of that. It's not normal to have that much. I mean, that's like slotted. Normally you'll have just a little bit of a wear, but not that deep. Um, this one's had some trouble. You can see where it's leaked oil all the way down the side of it. And you can see the staining, you know, from pretty much everywhere. <laughs> and the idler seems to be okay. It still is good. It's still, you know, lubed properly, etc. Uh, but this part's bad. One of the real things that got my attention is when I went to collapse this or compress this in the vise is that as I was compressing it, the vise was able to turn, you know, pretty fast. You should move it really slow, like the second hand on a, on a uh, monologue type clock. But anyway, so this one's toast. Normally they're fine and you can reuse them. This vehicle has 130,000 miles on it. And this is the first time that the water pump's been done. I think the timing belt as well. This was a rental car that was purchased around 60,000. And uh, the, my aunt and uncle now have 130,000 on it. They've put the miles as well as, you know, family members and the like. Anyway, that's what the failed tensioner looks like. You can see the oil leak all through there. It'd be fun to take the snap ring out of this and uh, see what it's like. Of course, I would release this first and uh, and then do it. And how do you release them? Like, well, if it doesn't have the ring, like basically this is my new best friend because it goes in my toolbox and I'll be using this. New key. Uh, but I use a, a angled pair of uh, wire cutters or dikes. I just go like this and I can use the leverage of it to pull it back like that. After it goes that first one, it gets real hard to pull. And you can see this still applies tension and it might have been okay, but I'd be a lot more comfortable with the new one in. How much is the new one? That's what you're going to ask. It's about 150 bucks for the new tensioner assembly. And you have to buy the whole thing. You can't get just this. So, well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my video. And see, here's the old water pump. That's how you do the timing belt on these. Now, somebody else is going to ask, how in the world do I get that 22 millimeter uh, bolt out for the harmonic balancer? Well, I'm glad you asked that. You'll notice that I pulled the power steering pump and somebody else is going to have the question, why is the power steering pump pulled? Why did you need to do that? You don't, but it's just safer. Um, the way that these work out is uh, with this on there, and the key should be in the down position, by the by, for it to be lined up. To get this bolt out of there, what I do is I use a Craftsman ratchet that's half inch drive, and I use a short impact socket, 22 millimeter. But the reason why I use this is because these are just ridiculously bulletproof. They're awesome. I love them. And they're lifetime warranty in case they're not. So you put this in there. And uh, I take Lucy, who's my favorite hammer. I got it all. It's just a great neck. Um, and I just whack that sucker on the end. Now as you go to where you're close to this, um, like this mark over here, is going to be pointing up this way or up this way at 45 degrees and the engine will be under a lot of compression that's when you're more likely to be at top dead center so when you're at top dead center the real one 
you just smack it. Now most cars they do top dead center to put the timing belt on. Not these, this is a better way. I really like it because this way you don't get into trouble. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you put this here and you just hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it. You want to be choked up on your hammer and you want to be hitting on the end of the ratchet to maximize it. Now the worst case scenario is that you're going to hit your power steering pump or your alternator or you're going to grip break this and then you're going to be dead in the water so take measures to ensure that that does not happen and then just carefully just you know hit it and eventually you'll get it to where it cracks loose and it'll come out no problem so that's how i get that off another way of doing it is you can get a four foot pipe wrench look at this thing should have like some star wars music playing dun you can put this around the harmonic balancer and hold it still and then use a breaker bar. Is that long or what? Yeah, I've got a big tool. So that's the other way you can do it. Um, another way is to pull the radiator and then use your impact gun and a short socket. By the time you've gone this far and you've already drained the antifreeze, all you're going to spill you know from here is just the uh, transmission fluid if it's an automatic but then you can get your impact gun in there when the radiator's not there so those are your three options uh, of course somebody's gonna ask how do you tighten that well you just go the other way whack 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 um, so anyway if you like the video click the like button if you want to see more videos like this uh, you can click the subscribe button above and uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching my video. So feel free to share this video on Subaru forums and stuff. More people that, uh, if you can get this link to this video, the little URL, if you can get that in about 13 different places, that'd be great. That'd put me at the top of Google. I was there. I think I'm, I might still be there. But anyway, the more people find it, the more that... Uh, makes the world awesome in my opinion because Subarus are awesome and people don't like doing the timing belts everybody's going to the timing chains the timing chains are bad <laughs> let me tell you why a lot of people love them to death and I don't blame them it just depends on what your values are I can do this in two hours it's no big deal once every 90,000 miles do this and then you get better gas mileage better acceleration better everything because a timing belt weighs so much less than a chain and because the engine has to drive the motion of it if you have a belt you can get better acceleration it's like having a lighter flywheel and you also get better a fuel economy because it has less drag because you don't have that much mass force equals mass times acceleration if you want to know about efficiency or power or any of that the less mass you have the easier it is to accelerate it acquires less force so just thought i'd throw that your way so Thanks again for watching my video. Love you guys.